Hello and welcome back to my channel. In this video I'm going to be fleshing out my voxel project from the last couple of videos and adding actual gameplay. The general idea for this game is to manage the dwarves to gather resources and build out their home while defending it from random goblin attacks. So let's get started with the dwarves. The first thing I'm going to add is the dwarves movement and the quickest way to do this would be to use Unity's inbuilt nav mesh system which I used last time in the giraffe prototype. The basics to the nav mesh agents are super simple. All they need is a surface to bake the navigation around, the nav mesh agent, and then a way to tell the agent where to go. So I've already got the floor, so I just added a navigation surface, mess with the settings, and that's all ready to go. The dwarves and any other unit that's going to be moving about require two parts, the nav mesh agent, which does all the calculations and movement with the mesh, and a script to control the movement by telling it where to go. The nav mesh agent, like the surface, is just a simple component that I just add to the dwarves and they magically work. With a few settings I can tweak to get the behaviour just right, such as speed, acceleration, braking and obstacle avoidance. The final bit is the class that actually tells the nav mesh when and where to move. For the dwarf, this will be controlled by their worker AI. How I plan for this to work is that the player will assign the units a job role and a location. If the unit is given a resource gathering job, they'll have to walk to the nearest resource pile, farm it and then carry the items to the designated drop off point. So let's get started on the basic class. For the gatherers, they'll need to know what resource they're looking for and where to put it. So for now, I've given them two fields, a resource and a vector three. The resource class is a simple scriptable object that stores the basic information for them, such as the name. To find the nearest resource, I'm gonna use a simple algorithm that finds all of the resources of that type in an area, and then does some basic vector maths to work out which one is closest and give the AI that resource node. From there, the nav mesh agent will be told to walk there and then trigger an event when it arrives. The dwarf will then harvest the resource and when its inventory is full, carry the items to the drop off point and offload them before repeating the cycle. And here he is in action. At the moment, the dwarf will instantly grab the resource and has an infinite amount of carrying space, but that'll do for now. What I want to make sure I do early is to create a solid adaptable system for all of the jobs. So I'm going to create a new class called job and make the gatherer AI inherit from it. That way I can call a generic function and the dwarf will react according to their job subclass. So the AI will just say, hey, do job. And each type of worker would do their specific tasks without having to call them separately. Now that the dwarves are able to go to a resource and collect it, it needs somewhere to place it. So to begin, I'm gonna create a simple storage solution that will house all of the items. I'll just create an interface called iStorage, which will be added to any building that is allowed to store items and work seamlessly. Storage will work by having an item frame for each type of item to store the quantity. These frames are kept in a list and we need basic functions to add, remove, check and clear the items. I've made these systems quite a few times so I just whipped this up very quickly. I'm trying to keep it generic and expandable but I'm not going to worry if I don't get it 100% right straight away. That's just a problem for future me. Now I'll be able to not only add this to the building but also to the dwarves to store items and move them back and forth. So now, when the dwarf reaches the target destination in its loop, it needs to empty its storage into the building before going back to harvest more. For testing purposes, I've been using this hammer model for the storage, but it's time to whip up something a bit more suitable. So I opened up Magica Voxel yet again and started designing the basic storage area, which is based on a wooden gazebo, uh, to house the storage crates and shelter them. And with that in place, the gather AI is pretty much done, and already the game has a basic loop. But I'm not done there as the dwarf instantly interacts as soon as it arrives and then just idles for a bit, which isn't the exact result I want. So instead, this interact action is going to be controlled by an animation with events attached. The idea instead is that the dwarf will start an action animation when arriving, and when that is complete, the interaction occurs. For a tree or a rock, this will be swinging a tool at the resource and then when the animation is played, an event triggers, gathering the respective item. For each of these tasks, I can use an override controller for the animation to play unique clips. So when it cuts down a rock, it can use a pickaxe. When it cuts down a tree, it can use an axe. When it gathers berries, they can use their hands, which adds quite a lot in terms of visual feedback. It's always a favorite of mine to create these simple little animations. So let's get these done. With these animations, it's important that they display the weight of the movement properly. So when the dwarf swings an axe, there needs to be a slow backswing on the arm and body, and then a swift swing to hit the target and a final slow recovery back to the starting position. I then just have to add an animation event to the clip that calls a function to initiate the interaction. 
The function will then call the workers in DirectScript the same way it was using it before. So hooking this up took very little effort and rewriting, which is always nice to see. So with all that in place, here are the dwarves going about the day collecting the resources. As you might be able to tell, they're all using the same animation clip for everything, but that's just because I haven't made them anymore yet. I'll work on that in the future so that each action has a unique clip, but for now, this will do. And with all that in place, the project is starting to look like a real game. I know this project's progression is very slow, but I'll try to speed that up going forward. I massively appreciate the support my channel's been getting recently, I'm just doing what I enjoy and I'm glad I can share it with people. And so, as always, don't forget to like the video, subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.